to the team of the season prediction underrated team I'm just trying to sort out my bloody presentation there we go I've got a nice glass of coke because I'm thirsty it's refreshing in it not really thirst quencher uh, wrong one but welcome to the underrated Premier League team of the season prediction as stated in my previous video this is going to be full of players that not necessarily underrated in the sense that no one really thought about them, but more in the sense that they've made a good start to the season and or they had a very good season last season. So keep an eye out for them. They're mainly focused on mid-table to or anywhere between sort of like eighth or, or between sixth and you know the bottom of the league. Not anyone from the top teams because there's no point um, we all know about them and they're always in the spotlight regardless so these are more than players that need a bit of recognition compared to what they've done and what they've been doing last season so for this once I've clicked on it there we go I've gone for a little bit of a different approach I've gone for a centre back a wing back two wide players one on either side a centre mid slash cam CDM whatever and two strikers um, then on the bench a defender, a midfielder and an attacker whether the attacker's more known as a winger or a striker not too sure whether the midfield is more of a defensive attacking wide player, I don't know and then defender, could be centre back or wing back you'll have to wait and see the thing that I've been missing on the last sort of videos because we all know about the player and we all know that not necessarily the stats dictate how well a player's done but more specifically, for the other like definite out and out team the season players that we saw last season, predicted for this season, we know that their ability is top notch. We know that they're playing the best of their ability, and that's that. We don't really need to look too far into the stats specifically. However, with these, it's more of a case of looking at their stats and actually comparing them to other players and seeing how well they've done really solidifies the fact that yeah maybe they're underrated so instead of looking at the information about my prediction for them I've looked more at the stats last season and this season and compared how they've started and whatnot you'll see when I get into it so starting off with the centre back it's Willy Bolly if you're a Wolves fan I don't know who Lennis is you will you'll probably read this guy quite a bit now you've got to think that anything that says sort of fifth or fourteenth or anything like that as these two uh, stats down here suggest doesn't mean it's bad fifth isn't a bad place especially for someone in Wolves you've got think of other good defenders Laporte, Van Dijk, uh, Rudiger, Maguire how well they played last season to finish fifth is exceptional so Willy Bolly oh no so I accidentally forgot to change the ages because what I do is I get sort of a layout how I want it to set up and then I duplicate enough and then change like centre back, wing back, centre mid, left mid, right mid as I go. And then I put the players in. I choose players from them positions. I then put all the stats in and then I sort out all the graphic images. So I forgot to change the ages. I changed all of this, just not the ages for each individual player. But now I fixed it. Willy Polly is 28, not 27 as you previously saw. Now I need a drink. I've put him based on his stats quick defensive and a rock he came fifth in the amount of tackles he made last season that's successful tackles that's fifth when you think of how many defenders play in the Premier League at such a high quality that is exceptional he had 172 clearances which put him 14th again there's tackles specifically you see a lot uh, I might add that um that specific stat so if I've got a centre back poly this is comparing him to other defenders if you compared him to then midfielders he'd be like 12th or 13th because there's so many centre defensive midfielders that also make tackles so each individual position is well each player is um, compared and positioned against players that play in the same area so defender midfielder attacker or forward I think the Premier League stats uh, suggested anyway so he's fifth when comparing how many sort of wing backs make clearances, how many goalkeepers fall under the defender role that also make clearances. Um, 14th is a very, very good stat. 
this season, he's already eighth with the amount of tackles made as a defender, and sixth in the uh, clearances made with 18. He's made a good start. Uh, obviously, I think he's Wolves' first choice defender. Uh, I suppose maybe dead donker at a push, but he plays more CDM, doesn't he? Um, you know, he's, he's been class. And personally, I didn't realise how much of an impact he'd had for Wolves. But when you really look at their stats from last season, he played very well. Wolves did very well. And all in all, he's just a very, very good centre back. At wing back, we've gone with Ricardo Pereira. Many of you want me to put Wambi Saka in. He's probably coming up on my next video, if I'm being totally honest. I didn't realise how much of an impact Pereira had for Leicester City last season. Him and Maguire did very, very well. But I wanted to choose Bolly over Maguire because Maguire's now made his big move. Pereira still stayed local to Leicester. Or stayed loyal to Leicester, should I say. He made 118 tackles last season. He was the second best defender in terms of making tackles. That's comparing him to every single centre back and wing back, and he was second. First was Wambizaka. He put in an absolute shift, and I think he's been completely, completely underrated this season. Uh, why he wasn't given some form of team this season? He came 22nd in passes. With 1,532 or 1,532. Now, when I was looking through the passes, a lot, and I mean so many, of the top passes in terms of defenders were centre-backs, not wing-backs at all. So to finish 22nd is really good. I think it was like the 5th or 6th highest in terms of wing-backs. But you can't always guarantee where that player plays on a weekend, so I have to rate him based on comparing him to other centre-backs uh, and other defenders. Left back, right back, you know. Um, this season, he's already first in the amount of tackles that have been made. And 14th in the amount of passes been made for a wing back. That is stupidly good. So I think he's been completely overlooked and underrated last season. And possibly at the start of this season. Uh, his attributes, he's fast, strong. He's very defensive minded, as you can tell by the amount of tackles he puts in. Um, he's not like, well, I suppose he's sort of like Trent Alexander where he gets forward a little bit. He does like to play key passes, but I think he's more of a link up wing back rather than a run down the wing and cross the ball in. I suppose he could be. Uh, I, I need to watch more of him this season to really keep an eye on him. And so do you. You really need to keep your eye on him this season. As a right mid, I've gone with Lucas. Now, this was a little bit controversial because I know uh, he, he played right mid, right wing, striker quite a lot. But I was struggling for sort of right midfielders in the sense I don't know that even when Harry Kane plays up front he will be playing out on the wing so I've added him to them. Um, this position another thing that really solidified his position as right mid was the fact that the likes of Sterling and Sane and um, Mane and Salah all came under the attackers or forward category on the Premier League stats website Lucas came under midfielder, so I thought he qualifies. I'm comparing his stats to other midfielders that you'll be seeing in a minute anyway. So therefore I put him right midfielder. I know that the comments are going to say, but he played striker quite a lot. If the Premier League has, has him as a midfielder, that's what I'm going to compare him to. So I'm going to put him right midfielder. Anyway, 27 years old. He is 27. I didn't have to change that stat. We all know he's fast, he's a good dribbler, he's a goal threat. He did very well at the last, at the, the latter age, uh, at the latter stage of the season last year, when he played in the Champions League and in the Premier League. You know, he scored that hat, was it a hat trick he scored? Was it two goals in the semi final to push them through and then lost his position? Like a dickhead. Anyway, so last season he scored 10 goals, he was fourth ranked amongst midfielders. He had 45 shots, which puts him 23rd, which I think is really poor. But as we know, he didn't really play too much at the start of the season, so you have to take that into consideration. This season, he scored one already, which puts him fourth amongst midfielders for scoring goals. And he's had nine shots already, so he's already what uh, a fifth of the way through. 
what he was at last season in terms of shots. Um, not all of them are successful. As you can probably see, he's only scored one. Uh, but that ranks in third amongst midfielders in the amount of shots. So he's, he's been doing very well. And I think y you need to keep an eye on him this season. Centre mid. We've gone with Ndidi. Now, classify him as a centre mid, CDM, whatever you want. There's no taking away his stats from last season. He was so good, again, for Leicester City. He's a great winner of the ball. He's a great passer of the ball. He can run with the ball. I've put him as like a really, really good all-rounder. Now, what surprised me is how young he is. He's only 22. I thought he was about 26, 27 and coming into that sort of prime age. He's not. He's 22. He is going to be so good if I don't see a Premier League or a top, like top two team from Europe and pick him up soon. It's going to be it's going to be a waste, or not a waste, because he'll do well at Leicester regardless. I think that many teams need to have him on the radar. He's like Kante. How, how are Leicester doing this? They've replaced Kante with Ndidi, and he's doing just as well. Last season, he had the most tackles for any midfielder. I also think he had the most tackles overall. Because I think he was top one and didn't refresh it. And then when I refreshed it for midfielders, he stayed at the top. I think that's right. I could be wrong. Not only that, is he's having so many passes. He was 1,984 passes he made last season, which ranks him ninth amongst all midfielders. To put that into perspective, look how many midfielders that you'd claim to be passing midfielders. De Bruyne. Bernardo Silva. Pogba. Jorginho, uh, Barkley, Loftus Cheek, they play all played last season. Uh, Scott McTominay, he's a great passer of the ball. Okay, through the midfield is Mad Dog. There's him. I know he didn't play much. Terreira, Xhaka. There's 10 there. Yet indeed he ranked ninth. So he's in this list. Probably these aren't even close. That is astounding for saying job that he has to do for the team. Not only that, he also had 2,695 touches, which means he was on the ball a lot, which ranked him sixth amongst, again, midfielders. Oh, by the way, this passing and touches stats also include wide midfielders. So your Ryan Fraser, your Philippe Anderson, your Bernard who play on the wings, right midfield, you've got Walcott players like that that play wide. Ranked against these, he still finished ninth and sixth. For me, this was the most underrated player last season. Absolutely ridiculous. This season, he's already put in 11 tackles in three games. Successful tackles as well, by the way. That ranks him first already. Passes. Yes, he's ranked 44th. But he's going to pick up and he's going to get better throughout the season. Touches 150. Ranked 45th. But you can see how much players are getting on the ball this season. I think it shows that he's not really getting on the ball as much this season because they've brought in new players. However, he's still he's still doing his job. He's still tackling. He's still winning the ball back. So keep an eye out for him this season. He can do very well, and he's only going to get better. Ryan Fraser at left midfield. Um, absolutely stupid player last season. Ridiculously good, and how he's still at Bournemouth, I've got no idea. Twenty-five years of age. The attributes is attacking. He's one of Bournemouth's key players, and he's going to be well. He's going to be doing well this season. Last season, 14 assists ranked him first amongst midfielders. Seven goals put him seventh. Passes as a wide player. I expect this to be a little bit higher, maybe like or towards the 1500s ish. And he ranked him 43rd. I'm not too sure was he out last season. At any point, did he get injured? Was he out for a couple of weeks? That can hinder the amount of passes because if you're out for two weeks and you miss, what, three to four games? Or we'll say two to three games. Then players can have like an extra 300 passes within that that overtake you. So if, if he was out, that's understandable. Still score goals. Ranked seventh amongst midfielders. Which is huge because, you know, he did. he's the sort of player, he wasn't a winger. He was more of a wide he was the epitome of a left midfielder. You know, he, he didn't get too far forward, he didn't get too far back, he was always crossing the ball and he did well. Um, 
this season he's already had 73 passes. Unfortunately, yet to get a goal and an assist. So we'll have to see how he uh, performs. Come sort of like the next couple of weeks. See if he stops. You know, if he scores a goal, gets an assist. He'll add to that tally as the uh, season goes on. Hopefully he can beat last season. Next is Timo Pukki. Now, this one for me was a bit... I wouldn't really say he's underrated because everyone rated him in the Champions League. But what I will say is that no one really expected him to do as well at the start of this season as he has. That's sort of the way I went about this. I didn't think Pukki... I think Pukki did very well in the Championship. He's got plenty of goals. He was the top goal scorer with 29 goals. He was the second top with the amount of shots he had on. Uh, at, uh, the amount of shots he had, putting him second. That's all good. We know that he was amazing in the championship. He's strong. He's a poacher. He's a goal threat. And he's 29 years old, so he's, he's he's at his prime. I didn't think he'd have the impact that he's had for Norwich. Come the start of this season, he's already scored against Liverpool. He's got a hat trick against Newcastle. He's he's a player that means business. He's already top goal scorer joint with. Raheem Sterling, as of this video being made. He's second top in terms of the amount of shots he's had for a striker or a forward, as Premier League like to say, with 12 shots. 12 shots and 5 goals coming up from the Championship is ridiculous. That's amazing. So I think he's underrated in the terms of no one rated him to do as well in the Premier League as he has. But at the same time, we all need to be focusing on him. He's going he's gonna to smash it this season, I think. Second striker, Jimenez, 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 Raul Jimenez came from, uh, was it Benfica, I think it was Benfica to Wolves, uh, on loan, signed as a full player this season, 28 years old, hit his prime, uh, attributes, is fast, strong and clinical, um, last season, he's got 13 goals, put him 10th, did very, very well, when compared to likes of, you know, Mane, Salah, Sterling, or Kane, everyone like that. All the big clubs scored lots of goals last season. You know, Aubameyang, like I said, if we go through them, Aguero, Sane, Sterling, Bernardo Silva, Hazard, Pedro, Willian, Liverpool, uh, Salah, Mane, so that's 11, Firmino. This is 12 plays he's competed with that all are goal threats and have missed a team, Man United. Sterling, uh, Rashford, Martial, Lukaku, 15 players there, I've missed so many off that I could have put in, Vardy, I'm still trying to rack my brain and go through players, anyway, he's still ranked 10th with 13 goals, that's huge, 4th, 4th with the amount of shots he had on target, 4th compared to all them 15 players, Outrageous, absolutely outrageous. This season he's already scored. He's had eight shots. That puts him twelfth and thirteenth respectively. You know, as the season goes on, it's more of a case of just improving that number and keep improving and don't stop. That's why at the end of the season, thirteen to fifteen goals will rank him about ninth, eighth and ninth. Shots we we're looking at the hundred and twenty plus at least, and that'll rank him third as second, second and third. Gotta be. Anyway, that's what I want to see from him this season. Very underrated last season in comparison to all the big, big name strikers and attackers that he's been compared with. And, well, where he ranks amongst that. Moving on to the bench. We have a defender, midfielder and attacker. Defender, Fabian Shaw. Uh, only really came into the uh, spotlight towards the second half of the season. Don't think they had the best start to the season, did they? I think amongst that, Shah had been injured a little bit and whatnot. So, in terms of his stats, don't look too heavily into them. Last season, and his actual ranking amongst them. But more, I think, where he could be this season if he carries on the form. So, 27 years old, the attributes, is a strong leader. You know, I know many Newcastle fans have been commenting saying, look, Shaw has actually been really, really solid for us. Lascelles, I don't rate him as much, but I know you've said that he's not too bad. Last season, 60 tackles ranked him 25th. With tackles, 
you see more of the wing backs make tackles. It's more of the centre backs that pass it. I don't know. I don't know how that's come about. But yeah. So tackles not particularly high. Passes again not particularly high. Twenty fifth and fifty ninth. His passes was ranked, which is atrocious. I think that's really bad. That needs to be better. However, four goals ranked him joint second with about three or four other defenders. So he's more of a goal scoring defender. He likes to get forward at corners. So maybe that's where his tackles really let him down because he, he doesn't get back. He relies on the other players staying back. Whereas if he stayed back, he'd get more tackles if anyone tries to counter attack. That being said, this season he's already got 11 tackles, which ranks him sixth. He's doing very well. He started very well. Passes wise, 108 already. He's already a tenth of the way there. It's only been three games. And you play, what, 48, I think, in total? No. No, he might be, yeah, he might be looking at the same sort of level. Maybe a few more. Goals, he hasn't scored any yet. But as a defender, you don't expect goals. I just wanted to put it in there because he scored a load of goals last season as a centre back. That's really good. Um, but I think it's another one that is a little bit underrated, especially given the, the sort of strength of the Newcastle team, you know. The defence isn't amazing, they do lead goals, they don't particularly play too well, they haven't really got the solid, solid uh, depth, squad depth that they really need for the Premier League. And so he's sort of like, he's the, he's the key man in that whole team. Midfielder, how can you not go with Ruben, Ruben Neves? Now, given how well Wolves did, his stats are a little bit in between for me. I still do think he's underrated for a number of reasons. One, he's only 22. He's a strong leader. He's strong in that midfield. He's a very, very good all-round midfielder. And I think that's what I need to focus on here. Which is why I've got completely opposing stats and where he ranks based on them. He's a leader. We know this. He's a very good character in the squad. Last season, scored four goals. Ranked him 27th. When you see the amount of goals that everyone else scored in the likes of Jota, Jimenez, um, Neves scored, I think, mostly free kicks, unless they were all free kicks. Passes, he's ranked 11th with almost 2,000 passes. As a midfielder, that's what you expect. So to finish around 10th, when compared to everyone else, all the other midfielders, that's, that's brilliant, that's class. Not only is he scoring goals and passing, he's also getting back and tackling. He was ranked 13th amongst the midfielders. That includes Kante and Didi, uh, Adrissa Gay last season. All the defensive midfielders that you'd expect to make tackles. Matic, um, Pogba, I'm, I'm, I'm just relaying more players. Uh, Dyer, Sissoko. Uh, this season he's going up against Ndombele to compete with all these different players. He, he, he managed to finish 13th in tackles, 11th in passing and 27th in the goals. Not his really key attribute is it he's the perfect all round midfielder and I think he deserves a lot more recognition from last season this season he's already scored a goal ranks him fourth amongst midfielders 170 passes already ranks him 10th amongst midfielders again you've got to think about all the attacking midfielders that link up play and do well that have maybe four passes to every one you expect a midfielder to pass tackles six six tackles already I mean, he ranks him 22nd, but when he's f when, you, when you see how much of an impact he has on the team to do all these different jobs and to do them all well, shows how much of an all-round midfielder he can be. Last but not least, a bit of a surprising one for me, is Richarlison for Everton. I had actually three names, or two other names that I wanted to add to the list, in the likes of Sigurdsson and Felipe Anderson. I actually looked at their stats and both Neves beat Sigurdsson by a mile. I thought Sigurdsson was a lot better than his stats actually suggested, so potentially could be quite overrated. He plays well, but his stats don't actually suggest that he does as, or has as much of an impact as is needed. Felipe Anderson was actually a lot worse than I thought he'd had last season. I thought he did stupidly well. But his stats suggested otherwise, so maybe you guys need to enlighten me on why Felipe Anderson was given so much sort of credit last season and so many, I don't want to say, but informs on FIFA. Was he very inconsistent quite a bit? Maybe he just had like a good performance against a lower, lower side, got an inform, didn't do 
you do well against everyone else. But when actually looking and trying to look through the stats to find an attacking player that both performed very well in terms of goals, shots, assists and all this lot, Richarlison was finishing around that 10th to 13th spot every time. And that was on the first page. He was doing so well and I thought, you know what, I keep seeing his name crop up. I didn't even expect his name to crop up as well as they did. So you know what? Underrated. I hadn't heard that Richarlison had been this good. Again, he's ranked 10th with the amount of goals he scored last season. Comparing him to all the attackers, wingers, that he's coming up against 10th and 13 goals is very good. 83 shots. Ranks him 11th last season. That's stupidly good. Again, comparing to who, who has shots. Kane, Salah, Mane, Lukaku last season. Rashford, Martial this season. He's in and around that. And he's hitting them. And he's doing it well. And I didn't even expect that. So for me, that's that's what signifies underrated. Is when you actually look at the stats, he did really well. This season, he hasn't scored, but he's had seven shots. He does need to get a bit more clinical by the sounds of things, whether he's been playing more of a wide man, because I know at times as well, even within this, he wasn't even playing as a striker, he was playing as a winger, maybe even as a wide midfielder, but the Premier League had to add him as a forward, so I have to put him into the attacker's forward category, but that's going to wrap up this video, I hope you guys have enjoyed, um, let's go back to this, um, let me know who other players you think need to get added to the underrated list, especially from your team. Um, I know there's probably going to be a few that I've missed, but there's one name in particular that's had a very good start to this season that I know you guys have been probably commenting over the past two videos that is a central attacking midfielder. 